Chapter 7 Saturn's wealth in the vegetable kingdom. Saturn's primary colour, blue. Aromatic healing herbs. The gold shrub. Metal plants. Blue grass. Form changing meadow flowers. Fragrant algae moss. Saturn's mountains and plains. We have already learned about some of the more useful plants. We shall deal with the other plants in a more general sense, because if we were to discuss every peculiar plant on Saturn in detail, it would take too much time and would not serve the intended purpose, especially if you take into consideration that we would have to visit another 76 of these large countries as well as several hundred smaller islands, and the entire tremendously large southern and northern areas, which are covered with ice. Then the many even larger countries of the Ring, and also the Seven Moons. Therefore, we can only touch on that which is most peculiar, and we shall have to bypass everything else, and only make mention of those which bear some resemblance to the products of Earth. Herifa, the country we have been dealing with, has countless species of plants which partly resemble those which grow on Earth. But on the other hand, there are many species which bear no resemblance at all to any on Earth. And then again, there are also plants which are native only to Saturn and exist nowhere else. Regarding the plants which resemble those of Earth, the principal difference is that the plants of Saturn generally surpass your Earth plants by hundreds of times in size and growth. Because of their size, you can see their entire magnificence with the naked eye. Whereas on Earth, you have to employ a microscope. The second difference is the colour. On Saturn, green is mostly replaced by a fresh and cheerful blue in all its hues similar to America, where some plants are more blue than green, and the green itself is closer to a blue than a yellow. Yellow is actually the colour which is most distant from the colour of life. A third difference is that the blossoms of these plants are considerably larger and more plentiful, and their colour meld is enhanced by something that looks like a polished metallic base which shines through. Comparing the fruit of the plants on Saturn with those on Earth, a single kernel of corn on Saturn is the size of a hundred or at times even a thousand of those on Earth. Furthermore, a plant produces ten or even a hundred times the number of kernels. This high yield is necessary because, on Saturn, half a harvest year corresponds to fifteen years on Earth. This is also why a ten-year-old Saturn child would be almost 300 Earth years of age. These are the essential differences of those plants which, on a smaller scale, also grow on Earth.
If you want to awaken your fantasy, look at such a plant on earth and imagine all the parts of the plant to be a hundred times larger in size. In addition, imagine it with the colours that such a plant has on satin, as well as with all the other splendours this plant possesses when viewed through a microscope. When you approach it in this manner, you will have an idea of the vegetation on satin. In the higher mountain regions of satin grow extraordinary healing herbs. Their ethereal aromatic healing powers are so enormous and far-reaching that not only do they keep the satinites in the best of health, but their healing effects reach distances of more than a thousand million geographic miles through the ether, so that, for example, by preference, the elder bush, juniper trees and bushes, juniperus communis, and also those healing herbs with spines, note one, hawthorn, thistles, etc., receive a significant amount of their ethereal healing aroma from the plants on satin. There is one species of mountain herb on satin which I should explain in more detail. This herb is known by the name of Helatharinaga, which, when translated, means the thousand-leaf gold shrub. This shrub grows directly on bare rock, and the stem reaches heights of 18 to 24 feet. On the stem, about a thousand light red leaves wind around the shrub in a spiral form. Their shape is a longish oviform ovate and usually five to six feet long and three feet wide. From the edges of these leaves protrude nine inch long tips so that from the stem of the leaf to the end of the leaf there are 100 of these tips. Therefore, a leaf has 100 of these tips on each side for a total of 200. These tips have a dark blue colour, which becomes lighter towards the spine tip. This spine, which is the longest in the centre, has at its very tip a bundle of spines which are as red as the leaf itself. The upper side of the leaf resembles red-hot iron or burning coal that is set ablaze with a bellows. And these leaves actually produce such a fiery brilliance. The underside of the leaf is adorned with four and a half inch long hair which produces all the colours of the rainbow from the leaf. And, even at some distance, you will discover a glistening rainbow under every leaf. The closer you approach to these leaves, the more the splendour of this rainbow increases, because the iridescence becomes more concentrated to the eye. The stem or stalk of the plant looks like a matte polished gold and rises, usually by three feet, above the sphere of leaves, upon which there are several efflorescent blossoms and upon which new buds continuously regrow.
The blossom has nothing in common with any flower on earth. Its shape is like a red gold sphere with a circumference of three feet to which well-shaped human arms are attached. And on every arm, instead of five fingers of different sizes, there are ten spine rays in a colour similar to gold. It has an appearance, almost as if someone were painting an outstretched hand, and, instead of painting a finger, he painted half a sun emanating ten rays. There are five flower petals around one flower bud, which grows in a straight line from the girth of this spear bud, so that half of the sphere is located in the calyx. In the centre of this half sphere protrude two stamens, one of which has a thickness of half a male human arm whereas the other has a diameter of only one inch. The thinner one is female and the other is male. The female is white in colour, whereas the male is pink. Both filaments extend three feet past the calyx and hang downwards towards the ground but not touching the ground. At the end of the female stamen, there is a backwards bent funnel, note one, stigma, upon which the male stamen with its orifice, note two, similar to an anther, bends down too. The male stamen will from time to time drop a fragrant liquid into the funnel of the female stamen, note 3, stigma. This is actual pollination or copulation of this flower. The female stamen absorbs the liquid into itself and, through this, bears the extremely powerful seeds of this plant, while the male stamen receives this ethereal liquid from the flower petals and the flower petals receive the liquid from the leaves of the stem. The colour of the blossom is white. Of course, that makes every flower petal white, even whiter than the white of your lilies. The collar disc at the end of the flower petals look like a polished ruby, which is somewhat toothed, similar to a flat hand at the end of an arm. The rays, however, are like translucent gold. This flower, or rather this healing herb, blooms and grows throughout the year, and is therefore available at all times. When here and there one is picked by the inhabitants, a new one grows in its place. When this plant is in full bloom, it disperses a fragrance you cannot imagine, since nothing on earth comes close to it. The fragrance of your rose is pitiful by comparison. If this healing herb, when in full bloom, would grow but once on earth, its intense, extraordinary fragrance could satiate a whole country, such as Styria, with the most beautiful fragrance. Were this not the case, then how could the aromatic healing power of such a plant reach the distant mountains of other planets?
that this is true can be confirmed by a person who has medial powers, and if such a person interacts astrally with this planet, he or she will tell you without reserve that the effects of this healing herb on this far-off planet can be perceived as very beneficial. The inhabitants of Saturn protect this plant very carefully, and they gather or pick it very rarely, because the strengthening effect of this plant is primarily in the air which surrounds these plants. Only when such a plant reaches a ripe old age and is close to withering away, when the hairs on the leaves start to turn whitish. Then it happens that the stem is carefully cut off and the seeds are sown on the rocks. The seeds of this flower are very small and resemble a fragrant dust more than seeds. This dust is drawn in by the pores of the rock and such a plant grows out of it here and there. There is one more thing we must touch upon, and that is how such a plant takes root on a bare rock. The manner in which this occurs is that the plant spreads its roots all over the rock similar to the stone liverwort on earth. From the larger roots that spread all over, countless fine fibre-like roots drill into the pores of the rock and hold the stem of this plant firmly so that no human being is able to tear it from the rock. The question now arises, what do these roots draw out of this dry, hard rock? The answer is simple. They draw a kind of stone oil. How do they extract it from the rock? This occurs through an inherent power, which is their own smelting fire and it makes itself known in little electric sparks, which are invisible to the naked eye. However, the roots have enough power to dissolve the bordering atoms of the stone into an ethereal oil, which is immediately absorbed by the roots and is led more and more purified into the stalk, into the leaves and flower petals, and eventually into the ethereal seeds. These are the most essential points that you should know about this highly peculiar plant of this celestial body. Even here, let your fantasy roam for a moment, and if you follow the description of this flower, you will be able to imagine it and enjoy it in your spirit and become enchanted by its healing power and splendor. Of course, this is not the only healing herb or plant. There are many different plants which have healing and beneficial effects and which transmit these effects ethereally to regions on other planets. Especially noteworthy are the metal plants. On Saturn they are known as Kibri. Through this species of plant, the Saturnites acquire the purest and all the various kinds of metals without the need of any chemical smelting or purification process. 
these metal plants come forth in the different areas of the mountains in the most magnificent forms. On earth there are plants which also contain metal. But nowhere will you find an earth plant where the roots, stalks and leaves are completely pure metal. You may be able to artificially produce something similar when you take a piece of zinc and place it in dissolved lead and, in a short time, the so-called satin tree will form. It is also called a lead tree. Whatever requires a great effort on earth can only be accomplished artificially and under the most one-sided, most tedious and poorest of circumstances. The creative power of nature works in a wide, rich and great manner on satin, free and without the slightest help from human science. That is why the ancient sages called the planet Saturnus. Saturnus in your language means as much as a satiated star. It also means satiation in all fundamental languages. Behold, that is how things thrive on this planet, which is a richly blessed celestial body in every respect. When you compare the growth of grass on earth to satin, the growth on satin is luxuriant and larger in size. The colour of the grass is blue throughout, but passing over into a violet colour. The seed stalk or funicule, which often reaches a height of 12 feet above the ground, is mostly a dazzling white and sporadically greenish. The spikes on the stalks are mostly a light green colour. In accordance with the variety of species of grasses, there is an extraordinary difference in the formation of the spikes as well as in the colour and shape of the leaves. The meadows are an absolute treasure of the greatest variety, with the most magnificent species of flowers. An enthusiastic botanist could not count all the species of flowers on one square geographic mile of meadow in 50 years. Especially peculiar on satin is the breeden. This is a species of meadow flower which changes its shape 10 times in one year. because as often as Saturn's highest moon has completed its course, and the other moons have done the same several times. That is how often this plant changes its shape. It only takes its original shape when all the moons assume their original position. This occurs approximately ten times in one Saturn year. That is why they were given a name that means moon flowers. Besides all the different species of grasses and meadow flowers, what is noteworthy on this planet are the many species of alpine moss. On Saturn they are called turby. They literally gild a treeless mountain height so magnificently that you can scarcely look at it when it is illuminated by the sunlight. 
This moss grows extraordinarily close together, in different varieties, approximately 30 inches high above the rocky mountain ground. It appears throughout like an iridescent golden sandy carpet accompanied by the most fragrant alpine scents. In these mountains, the alpine mountaineer continuously finds himself in a very fragrant air, as if one were to enter a forest of balsam trees in the Orient in Lebanon when they are in bloom. Anyone harvesting these blossoms feels as if he were in the entrance halls of heaven. We have already mentioned the heights of the mountains on Saturn. There is one more thing which should also be mentioned. Even the highest peaks are capable of growing some kind of vegetation, which is not possible on Earth because of the necessary low air level. Also, the mountains on Saturn do not have such steep inclines, but rise like regular pyramids. Also, they do not form unbroken rows or chains, but rise above the lowland like a meadow upon which you have piled cut grass into haystacks. And these mountains become higher and higher towards the centre of the country or island. If someone were to climb the highest of these mountains in the centre of such a country, he would easily be able to look over all the other mountains. Now and again you find rock formations in these mountains, but they are not as ragged as on earth. They rise on the side of a mountain in a juxtaposition like sugar loaves, some of which reach heights of anywhere from 30,000 to over 100,000 feet. However, a fully grown pyramid tree will put this rock formation to shame, because the tops of the pyramid trees reach heights higher than the peaks of these mountains. Now you can compare, from the information you have received, the height of a pyramid tree with the height of the mountains, and you will realise why this tree should be called a growing mountain rather than a tree. This land, Herifer, is the most mountainous country on Saturn but it is also the country with the most vast plains, which are traversed in all directions by the most beautiful, quiet, flowing rivers, which empty into the great Saturnian Ocean. In the chapters that follow, we will discuss what kind of vegetation grows on the banks of these rivers or streams and how they are otherwise utilised. But for today, I say Amen.